What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. If I ever find a little bastard of business, a dead meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, an extension of the YouTube channel Dead Meat. I'm James. I'm Chelsea, and we're a boyfriend and girlfriend, and we like to get scared together. <laughs> I'm just already laughing, one, at how mad we both are at this movie, and two, how you still have makeup on the last night. <laughs> Yeah, we were at a masquerade ball. Yeah, we were. And it was a lot of fun, and you know what? I think the dark eyes look good on me. Yeah, it's nice. I feel like Nestor Carvanel. <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, man. That's hard to compete with, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Not at all. <laughs> I'm not even on the same scale as him, yeah. but. Boy, we're going to talk about. Oh, it's Paranormal Pool Party, by the way. Still. Oh, fuck. That's right. I want to have it here. Oh, you fucked up. Oh, we got a pool. In the- yeah, you. Know. What the hell? You. Man, you fucked up the last. Pool party episode, Fuck it, dude. All the right. pool is there. Are leaves in it. We're not even sitting in it anymore. We're just on the deck. It's cold out. It's like, cold. Please come get us. They're they're asking us to leave. Yeah. Not so kindly because they want to put the cover on the the pool for the season. Yes. Okay. They're done with this shit. Right. And <laughs> yeah, it's so are we because oh boy, this movie is. A big old turd. Wow, well, Ghost Dimension sucks. <laughs> Ghost Dimension's very bad. I like how people uh, compared it to part four. No, part four is... Part four is boring, but yes. it's not poorly done. <laughs> this is just weird and bad. This is a bad movie. Yeah. Where do we even start? Uh, it's Okay, so this movie... What was it you you were just talking about this before we started recording? It was delayed two years? Dude, yeah, two fucking years. I, I am reading that this was originally slated for an October 2013 release, and it ended up coming out in October 2015. That's never after good. After multiple delays. That's, yeah, that's never a good sign. That's not good. Uh, anyone looking forward to New Mutants? Sorry, don't get your hopes up. <laughs> Is it's that not, still not out? That's still not out. The first trailer for that came... Back when I worked at Fox. <laughs> I was going to say, wait, they've been making that since I was at Kimmel, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, dude. Wow. Since we had like regular jobs. Oh, no. That's not going to be good. It's not going to be good. Oh, Fucking no. Fucking Maisie Williams and Sophie Turner probably don't even look like the yeah, same. Yeah, for real. Okay. Oh, so, okay, Ghost Dimension. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, it is. Uh, Like Clark told us in the... Episode for the second movie, this is essentially the fifth movie, she called it. Yes. Because it's a direct sequel to the original quadrilogy. It One, really two, three, is. Four. I think it's kind of weird that it's called, you know, it has a spinoff title instead well, of. Well, you can't call it five because Marked Ones was the fifth movie. <sighs> but they should have just called that five. Well, but then it, you know. I. It, they should have because it did tie in. To it the does. Original story. So why wouldn't you just call it five? Because it's not as white. <laughs> I don't <laughs> it, know. Yeah, it has less of the someone. Oh, shit. I should have printed it out. Someone on Twitter. Fuck. I wish I had it on me. Made a bingo card. I retweeted it yesterday and it's a bingo card of all the things that happen always in a paranormal activity. Oh, cool. I didn't see that. So it's. You know, people trying to make a sex tape, mm-hmm. a family member not believing you, obviously bead time. Yep. Uh, shit, I, I'll have to, to look Probably at something with kids, something with y- a yeah, little kid. Yeah, 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 for yeah, sure. Yeah, because that's always a thing. But it, I loved it. It made me laugh very hard. I just realized marked ones, no fucking kids, no little kids. Oh, yeah. Didn't yeah. Need oh, it. and McMansion is a square on the bingo card. And that's nice. also... Marked Ones does not have any. Marked Ones was so good. I know. Marked Ones is so good. Man. What an injustice. What It spoiled us. Because it, really it like did. brought us to this high in this series. Well, because I thought... Because, again, originally we weren't going to do Marked Ones. And, again, thank you all for being on board with us adding these two movies. Because it really helped me planning-wise. We've been out of town this whole summer pretty much. Yeah, we're finally done yeah for real but uh i was thinking oh what a surprise that we get this movie that's actually really good that we hadn't even planned on covering at first 
maybe this other one is a little uh, uh, undiscovered gem <laughs> of a film. No, it's not. It's very bad. No, it's poop, dude. So it is. Yep, it's a it's a direct sequel to everything that's kind of happened up to this point. The beginning of this movie is the end of part three. Yep, which. That's the one. It's always from the good 80s. to start your movie with a reminder of a movie that's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and a movie that I'd rather be watching. <laughs> yeah. It's the end of part three where it's Dennis at Grandma Lois's house. He's getting all contorted and his mm-hmm. back's getting snapped and back does that. And then yeah. the little kids, Christy and Katie, yeah, go, go upstairs, upstairs with and... Grandma Lois. Mm-hmm. And then Ghost Dimension is like, but wait. There's, there's more. There's more. What you didn't see was that they went upstairs and started talking to some guy. guy some guy with a ponytail. Some guy with a ponytail. And I'm thinking, <laughs> is this Toby? No. Is Toby just some dude? Is this what he looks like when he... Because that would be fucking hilarious, and I kind of almost wish that's what this no, was. No, no. I get the impression that uh, human Toby is a fucking unit, judging by his yes, legs at the end of this. legs. Oh, <laughs> Let me just say right off the bat, if you haven't seen this movie, we get to see Toby. Kind of. You see his legs. We see his legs, but we also see his kind of like spiritual, like. Oh, his stupid fucking like mummy. Yeah, it looks. Yeah, it looks like the mummy ride at Universal Studios. Yeah, a lot of this looks like the mummy franchise starring Brendan Fraser. So we get to see more of Toby than we ever wanted to see, but I kind of enjoyed it because it was so stupid. I just picture the rest of him being like that fucking Prometheus dude. Oh, yeah, the guy from the beginning of Prometheus who drinks the water and crumbles apart. Yeah, that guy. That That guy's awesome. (laughs) Lucy's mugging for the camera. What's new? Yeah, they go upstairs and they're talking to fucking ponytail guy. Yeah, his, whose name is Kent, I believe. And <laughs> I'm call this kind of sucks, I think, because this whole series and it, we talked about this a lot with Clark is it's cool that this series feels very feminine. The villains are a coven of witches, which is tra- There can be male witches. That's the thing. But traditionally, I when I think of a coven of witches, I think of just all women. Um, I, I it's just an aesthetic I like and a choice that I like. So it's kind of a bummer to realize, oh, Grandma Lois isn't the mastermind of all this. This character we've had lurking in our periphery all these movies. No, it's not her. Instead, it's some dude with a ponytail named Kent who we've <laughs> never talked about once. No, and the he's the one in guy? charge of everything, apparently, because we can't let Grandma Lois be in well, charge. Well, I don't know if he's in charge. He might just be a contractor that they're hiring out to like train these kids to do a thing. I don't know their exact roles because this movie doesn't fucking explain jack shit. As much as this movie feels very scripted in explaining Ugh. what's going on. It explains all the things I don't need explained because I already know them. There's a lot of scripting in this. And this was written by four people. And I think <laughs> yeah. you can tell. <laughs> it's Christopher never... Landon was not among them. No, and um, yeah, much to this movie's disservice, but this was written by four people. I pretty often, when you've got a bunch of people writing a movie, it's not going to be great. It's a, yeah, it's a bad sign. Yeah. Because it just feels like it's by committee. Yeah. You know? And there's so many scenes in this where we have to, I think as the, as the mythology of this universe grows, they almost kind of back themselves into a corner by having to, if you're going to have a new cast of characters every time, which you inevitably have to, because everyone always dies in these, you have to then to catch everyone up, have everything re-explained to all the characters. So now we have to have this coven explain that they're called the midwives, that there's this symbol, that they make doors, that you can go time travel. So there's a bunch of shit that we all have to have established for these characters to understand, which is shit we already know, which is annoying. Yeah. And it makes it all feel fake. Yeah, it's harder to make that feel natural. And I think they do a decent job in... It's the marked ones where they meet at a park with Allie Ray, right? Yeah, because that makes sense. Yeah, that she would be explaining that stuff because she's been, you know, that's been her life. But for new characters to newly learn that information and then regurgitate it, that's going to be a lot 
tougher to sound natural. Yeah, it just feels very... And these people don't. Like, there's even a moment, you know, where... Uh, so we have a husband and wife, and they have a daughter. It's Ryan and Emily, right? And, Correct. And they have a uh, a daughter, a little girl, Leela. But there's a scene early on where we joked that we were going to get the requisite try to make a sex tape scene and it's when she's upstairs and she's like your wife will have sex with you if you come upstairs and then she like bumps into a wall and laughs and it's like that was supposed to be sexy even that felt scripted it and- doesn't feel like they were given a lot of room to improvise in this one i don't know if that's the case but it does feel it just less feels very natural being fed lines mm-hmm. yeah i think you can i don't know if this was the case but to me it kind of seems like this had way more of a script that these actors were following than maybe some of the other ones where it's like all right in this scene we've got to get here go yeah yeah and then also right uh before we were even in the present day that scene with fucking kent or whatever his name is the <laughs> editing was so disjarring it was disjarring? like disjarring is uh, right. Is that a word? Disjointed. Disjointed too, but like it made me feel uncomfortable, and I think that's maybe disjarring. If I'm using, I don't a word. think that's a word. I feel like it's it, okay. Okay, that's fine. Whatever. <laughs> it made me feel so uncomfortable that I made up words. Mm-hmm. That it is it, just like these jump cuts. Mm-hmm. And I remember talking in the first one about how like they hid these little jump cuts with nice little tiny dissolves, and here it's just like really. I don't know. It's not. It's like they were in a race to get to the end of this movie because that scene with him talking to those little girls, uh, Christy and Katie, is just jump cuts all over the place and it's very disorienting. It's a lot. Mm-hmm. You're gonna have to take care of your sister and a lot of others. There's a very special little girl out there, a lot like you, and he's going to bring her to us. And this scene is Kent saying, "Both of you girls are gonna be very important in bringing about basically Toby, this demon." And I think he mentions there's another little girl. There's another who's little girl important. who's important too. She's very special, blah, blah. So we assume we're going to meet the little girl in this movie. Yeah. What I don't get in terms of this series mythology mm-hmm. is why Katie becomes involved in the first place. The way that we've retroactively scripted the kind of lore of this series because Mm -hmm. in the first movie it feels like Katie is the one that this all revolves around because she is our main character and we mention her sister a bit but then in the second movie we have it set up that the demon first was haunting the sister because she's the one who has the baby boy Mm -hmm. and then the demon gets transferred from her to Katie they have to force Toby to be transferred from her to Katie so why then in the lore of paranormal activity are both of the girls treated as important because they say Christy's going to be important, but Katie, you're important too because of your strength. What? I don't know. It doesn't make sense. And I wish it, if it does make sense, please someone explain to me if you are more familiar with how these movies are all connected. I, I actually was trying to look for some good timelines on and I couldn't find much. There wasn't anything super thorough that that's I could find. But I just, yeah, I, I think that's confusing for me is why both of the sisters, it feels like we introduced things in that first movie that then, yeah, I think they just kept piling stuff on top of itself and it's it doesn't make sense. Yeah, because like in this movie, what's the point of the firstborn son stuff? You right, because now Leela's the important thing. This this new little girl. Yes, to, and I didn't her even blood think of that. and their blood, or their blood and her blood, and maybe the firstborn hunter's blood is yeah. what they need. Because, but why Leela's blood? I don't know. Yeah, I Leela maybe should have been a boy in this to keep it the firstborn son thing. Because <sighs> you're right. Why her? Aside from the fact that she was also born on hunters. Birthday. birthday and that math by the way unless i'm missing something does not add the fuck i up. will say that on the wikipedia it says that she is six but yes. on the paranormal activity fandom wiki it says she's eight and okay. that does make sense eight years old makes sense mm-hmm. did you look up the uh actress the no i didn't little girl what her age was no amabelle um, from big little amabelle lies from big no, little I, lies. Did, I, I did not <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I I don't know. It's all weird. So this movie takes place in 2013. Yes, when it was supposed to come out. (laughs) When it was supposed to be released, yes. 
the kid in this is supposed to have been born in 2005. 2005. And same with Hunter from the second and third, no, second and fourth movies. Yes. Was born in 2005. Also, they have the same birthday. It's June 5th. Yeah. Nope, June 6th, Is 2005. Is it June 6th? Yes, June 6th, 2005. Okay, because they say it's the sixth day of the sixth month of the sixth year, but why is 2005 the sixth? Because 2000, 2000, 2001, one, two, two, three, three four, four, five. That's six. When people yell at me you for counting count wrong, 2000, yeah. you, you got to count on your fingers to double check because yeah. people always yell at me on kill counts. Just count on your fingers. I promise it makes sense. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense. I almost fell for my own trap there. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So we have the 666. Great. Yeah. That makes sense, I guess. Well, okay. Let's set up. Let's rewind a little bit. Sure. Because we're jumping into all the crazy shit at the end. So let's kind of establish who this, what this movie is about. Okay. Yeah. Santa Rosa. Yeah. California. 2013. Yes. We have Ryan and Emily, like Mm -hmm. we said. and Two rich as fuck parents yep just you again know, we're, back we're back in a mcmansion standard. with some white people we're and back to the, every night being like night number one yeah. whatever blah, blah, blah. uh these two have a young daughter six to eight years old named leela i will say creepiest kid actor you think so well, no, Robbie's so good. Robbie, dude, I miss Robbie. Robbie. Apparently, there was an alternate Fucking ending alternate of this ending with where Robbie. Robbie shows up. Fuck. I I personally feel ripped off. I know because we just we just rented it on Amazon. I wish I'd bought the Blu-ray just to just check to out the it. alternate fucking ending. Yeah. With Robbie, see our boy again. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that makes sense. You know, you got uh, you got mom, <laughs> dad, and daughter. And cool. then the dad has a brother. Yes, Mike, Mike Uncle Mike. Who, he, he's staying with them because he just got a divorce yeah. or a breakup. I think it was a bad breakup. Okay, sure. He just had a bad breakup, so now he's going to live with them. Mm-hmm. And then, hey, there's another character, though, hon. Oh, Skylar? Yes, yeah, Skylar. Uh Hey, Chelsea, could you do your best to explain to me who Skylar is and or her relationship to well, the other characters? It says on the Wikipedia. Okay. Let me see. <clears throat> 25 years later in 2013, Ryan Fleeg, Fleeg, Fleegy? Fleege. His wife, Emily, and their six-year-old daughter, Layla, I don't think that's right, <laughs> are about to celebrate Christmas when Ryan's brother, Mike, moves in after breaking up with his girlfriend. Great. Along with them is Skylar, who notices that Leela is talking to an imaginary Wait, friend hey, named Toby. Back, could you back up? Pause. Yeah. Uh, what was that? How did they introduce that? Skylar. Yeah. Along with them is Skylar. Yep. Who the fuck's Skylar. Along with them, Skylar. I don't oh, know okay. what else we need to know. Skylar along with. That's who it is. Christ. Guys, who the fuck who is Skylar? Skylar. I don't know if we missed a line. I don't think we did. We had the captions on. We did have the cap. We always have the captions on. But maybe we missed a line. But even if we missed one line, they call him Uncle Mike or say, hey, brother, remember when they we were They say it kids? a bunch. They so establish we, it. Yeah. Remember back in the fucking... What was it? The third movie when it was brother from another mo- mother. Yeah. All that they naturally introduced those relationships. You you understood who everyone was. Who the fuck is Skylar? I'm guessing she's just one of the mom's friends, but I is she we're the mom's never si- they told. do say Auntie Skylar once. Okay, so maybe it's the mom's sister. My best guess. Maybe I don't know. Maybe. It's but, very weird to the point where I thought something was up with Skylar. Yeah. Because <laughs> our version of this movie. Our <laughs> version of this movie is really good. Thanks. Because like at the third act break, they, they all look at each other like, wait, who, who is, is Skylar? Skylar? Yeah, that's my. OK, so this is how my version of this movie ends, because a lot of this movie is this family realizing they've been set up pretty much. <laughs> and they realize that this realtor that they they. Oh bought the God, house through isn't scene. a person that works for that company so she was part of the coven and this house was specifically built by the coven it's all it's all a big setup and so i'm thinking it would be so cool for all of them to realize wait none of us know skylar <laughs> we thought she was your friend wife and then we thought maybe she was you know everyone thought that she was friends with someone else or something yeah. or that they had been somehow messed with mentally to think that they've known this person their whole lives but they haven't and she is the one kind of 
moving the pieces around in this house. I think that'd be a creepy twist to It'd realize. Give her a fucking purpose. But no. She's like she's like the one who's kind of in tune with what's going on. But there are also scenes where she's dismissive of shit. That's another big problem with this fucking movie is the most unbelievably dismissive stupid and characters. skeptical and stupid really characters. Really stupid characters. And I'm pretty forgiving when characters are stupid in a horror movie because you have to... At some point, if your characters are, are perfect and do nothing wrong, it's not very exciting. Yeah, but that's why the best movies are like, make them as smart as possible. Exactly, and yeah. Are out of their or, yeah. Or the situation is written so well. Um, I think a movie that does this amazingly well is Green Book. Green Book is oh, a yeah. film. Or not yeah. Green Book. Green nope. Girl. <laughs> no, not, not, <laughs> not Green Book. <laughs> Green Book is really good at this, James. <laughs> yeah, dude, because Vigo just, you know, he's trying his best. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> just listening to shout out. By the way, do we hate movies? They were just talking about that part in that movie where Vigo folds the pizza in half in his hotel room and eats it and how incredible that is and how he must have ordered it special to not be sliced so he could fold it in half. Oh, it's a whole pizza? I don't even remember. <laughs> no, I'm so sorry. Green, Green Room, Green Room of course. is a movie that does what we're talking about very well because that, that script is so tight and that situation is so well choreographed that those characters could do... They could come up with the most brilliant scheme ever and they're still so fucked. Yeah. You genuinely are sitting there thinking, I don't know what I would do if I was them. There's no wrong thing for them to do because the situation is so fucked. Fucked for yeah, them. I mean, and and like, it's the thing, it's the descent, it's just the situ like characters not being total dumbasses. Yeah. Whereas here we have a camera. We'll get to it in a second. That can film ghosts, film ghosts, and then the characters still don't believe the, each the other. The camera. Let us reemphasize. The camera. Literally, it's a special camera it's with. A, what did they say it has? <laughs> So what? Six picture tubes? Instead picture, of three? Are picture tubes? I don't know. A name if that's for a, a part of a camera? I don't know. Because that's a big selling point of they they find Dude, this cam weird camera in the attic and it looks crazy. They open that boy up. It looks like it's got water cooling in it, man. Yeah, it looks like a. It, fucking it looks like there's a fruit computer. roll up running through it. Do you know what I'm talking about? That like rainbow colored wire. <laughs> yeah. There's like a fruit roll up just stuck in Look, there. Like the sour kind. Yeah. Yeah. It looks crazy in there it looks like a little factory in inside of it and <laughs> yeah i think you they open it up it's like yeah they so <laughs> they they're looking up cameras from around that time like the 80s and they don't find anything that looks like this so uh it was a specially made ghost camera it's a ghost camera with eight picture tubes or whatever the fuck they say <laughs> As as the reason why it's yeah, crazy. I think it originally had three picture tubes, but they overclocked it. Yeah, now it's got twelve. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just we're, we're gonna keep adding picture tubes. Soon they'll just be able to see like what's that fucking animal that is it rainbow shrimp or whatever that can see just like beyond all comprehension of spectrums and shit that humans can't. I don't know what you're talking that's what about. We're, but it sounds that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's like what we're going for now. Yeah, so they can record ghosts. Ghosts because of the. 18 picture tubes on the inside. <laughs> and they still have a line where, uh, J what's his name? Ryan. He's like, Emily thinks I'm crazy. Emily thinks, and this is, by the way, after they set the camera up in their daughter's room and there is a man shaped fucking, I don't know. It looks like, uh, uh, is it Venom in the, the, oh, the symbiote or whatever? Yeah. Or not, is know. that the Topher Grace one? Uh, I mean, I know obviously it's the new, that, there was a new one, that, but I never saw it. I saw the the Sam Raimi one. Sure. Just gloopy. Yeah. It's a gloopy guy. Yeah. He just gloops there in I front mean, of her bed for a while. We're talking effects that this man is not. We we have it. This, this man's not a video editor like Dennis. No, I guess yeah. Maybe Dennis could have been a little rascal and, you know, Photoshop. He's not. Up. He's not a fucking kid like in the fourth one where the dad's just like you could. I can't you kids believe are what so you guys good at can computers, do. Yeah. The computers. But this is insane. This is insane. There's a man shaved blob over their daughter's bed, and the only reaction we have is, "So I saw something weird in your room last night, honey." As he's talking to his child, and yeah. then his wife apparently is like, "Huh? You? I don't believe you." There's yeah. no ghosts in our house. 
Even when they first, before it's the gloopy dude that they see, it's just the weird, like, fractal images. It looks like a fucking VFX company's uh, uh, just test footage. Like a reel that a VFX company would show to be like, look, we can make particles in After Effects. Yeah. And, and yeah, it's just like this transparent. And he's just like, oh, hey, this is cool. This it's is picking. weird. And he walks into it and it like it's like he's underwater and he walks out and he's like, huh, that's something. It's like, what? Right off the bat, we... Are, we're fucking around with this ghost camera. And yeah, and he sticks it into this kind of weird apparition in their living room. It is so much CG all at once and way more than we're used to in the series. Oh, and it yeah. took me aback that we're maybe 15 minutes in and already it's weird particles and stuff floating. It looks like the, yeah, it looks like the beginning of a graphic company's logo. Yeah. Oh, we forgot to mention the fucking three-story Christmas tree they have in this house. Ooh, they have, so yeah, it's Christmas time and they have the biggest they Christmas tree. They have a fucking tree. department it's store It's like Rockefeller Square. Like, it is such a big Christmas tree. By the way, you grew up rich if you had a Christmas tree that you had to have two stories worth of space. Yeah, if you have to go up the stairs to put the star on top, you're doing pretty well. Yeah, you're good. You're doing pretty good. I do like also that, yeah, because I guess this is, you know, it's in December, so it's around Christmas time. I like that Uncle Mike, Mustache Mike, Mm -hmm. he's got a very prominent mustache. He has a depression mustache for (laughs) sure. This is a post breakup mustache. (laughs) He definitely uh, takes those like wire reindeer and make them hump each other. I literally used to do that on my paper route as a kid uh, when I was like 11 years old. Yeah. And that was when I had my camcorder (laughs) and Jackass had just come out. Yeah. So we would alternate filming ourselves uh sliding the wagon down the the park slide at three in the morning and also uh yes rearranging people's christmas decorations to make the reindeers hump each other so basically the ghost cam is this old ass camcorder it's huge you can tell it's the ghost cam footage because it's basically got interlacing lines on the footage it looks like a hey guys i'm gonna show you how to make uh, your footage look like a VHS tape from the 80s yeah. <laughs> and After Effects is what this camera looks like. Also, this movie, along with Conjuring 2, makes me assume that kids are really into teepees now. That's right. Just tents and the, teepees Yeah, in, in this little rooms. girl's room, she's got a Crooked Man-style tent. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it looks like the Crooked Man's living in there. I don't know who I'd... I feel like I'd rather be haunted by the Crooked Man than Toby. Because I don't think the crooked man is out for anything. He just kind of want to. He just wants to spook you a little bit. I guess we'll know when that spinoff comes out. Oh yeah, and you happening. know we're gonna go see that. Oh yeah, we'll probably be invited. <laughs> Hell yeah, I I'm gonna wear my crooked man best. I'm gonna wear a little <laughs> purple suit and hat. <laughs> Very nice. I'm sure Warner Brothers will keep inviting us to stuff <laughs> after that. <laughs> Yeah, so along with the camera, they also find a bunch of tapes. The tapes marked from 88 to 92. Yeah, and, and of so, course, these two two bros are thinking, there's probably some weird 80s sex tapes they, in here, they which do find, they do find the the attempted sex Dennis tape. And, yep, Dennis and... I've heard the mom's name from... The, but the one that got interrupted by an earthquake. I think the closest we've ever gotten to an actual yes, sex I mean, tape that, yeah, they, yeah. She, yeah, they were on the bed... Yeah, they were disrobing. Yeah, it was I don't about to know if anything in this one counts as attempted. Actually, you know what? Marked ones also got real close to having a sex mm, tape, you know? Yeah. So, I don't know. This you one, decide. I think, is the farthest away from any attempted sex This one, tape. yes. Because the camera, when it she's cuts like, before she goes upstairs. With me. Yeah, so. yeah, it cuts. He doesn't ask her, you know? Yeah, shockingly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? Wouldn't you, if you find a ghost camera, wouldn't you think, let's film ourselves doing it in front of the ghost camera? Maybe that's. You know, is that what you would think? I don't know. That'd be kind of cool and different. (laughs) (laughs) That has the potential to be really bad, (laughs) huh? Like Toby's just in the corner. There's a ghost who's like doing the midsummer (laughs) thing. (laughs) Man, see, and this is this is the scary movie parody is they do, and then Toby's there eating popcorn in the corner and he's pushing his butt. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you get to spoof this. You get to spoof Midsummer. Yeah, dude, should we just write a scary movie? I honestly think it'd be so fun to write a scary movie spec script. I think we could. We could. We do could a really write good a job. very good yeah. parody. Good in huge. Air it'd be quotes. good in terms of it would fit well within that franchise. It wouldn't be good. Do you remember when all those fucking parody movies were coming out? Oh yeah, those are so bad. Anyway. They're, they're going through these old tapes, and they start finding tapes of Katie and Christy, 
And they realize that these tapes go from happy family in a normal house to weird cult taking care of these two little girls and teaching them how to either astral project or it's kind of seeing through Toby's eyes is how I would maybe describe it is what they're doing. I will say at this point, we have the funniest line of the movie when Uncle Mike asks what Katie's doing in the tape and he's like, what's that one doing? Taking notes? But this is also the scene where we get one of the creepiest fucking things I agree. of I think, this whole series. Yes, this is a a concept that I think is such a good scare and a good moment that is not a jump scare, which this movie is chock a block full of, and I <laughs> hate it. But this this moment is so creepy. This this chilled me. And My I spine loved was it. tingling. Ooh, it's so good. The, it is the undisputed. High mark of this film, yeah, is the two times that they 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 do watch this. the tapes with young Katie. While is she's it talking. is it Christy or Katie? Or, I'm sorry, it's Christy. Okay, yeah, and she's like has her eyes closed and she's describing what. Yeah, she and sees. Kent is there, kind of leading her. Okay, yeah. so go, like you know, just see what he sees and then tell me what you're looking at. Tell me what you see, and she starts describing a room. There's a big bird over the door. What's so funny? There's a tent. It's like a bird. A bird. Which we saw earlier in Leela's room. Yeah. And a tent. And, yeah, and it's a, a little tent. girl's room. And there's, yeah, a bird above a doorway. And earlier when uh, the, what's the dad's name? Ryan? Yeah. Is tucking Leela into bed. He says, okay, I'll go check the closet for monsters. But we have, the uh, I, I don't know if the bird has a name, but they have yeah. a bird above the closet that, that keeps, that protects the closet. He's like a little guard. Yeah. Thing. And what's funny here is that the, the brothers, they're on their own right now and they're stoned. They, uh, did they, they do did, edibles? They t- yeah, they ate yeah. edibles. Yeah, yeah, they did edibles. So so Ryan's like, dude, do you fucking hear this? Like she, she's describing Leela's room. Yes. And it's creepy as it hell. It is creepy once you realize what she's, because it, it starts slow. She's just saying it's a room. And then yeah. she starts giving more specific details. And when you realize she's describing the daughter's room, ooh, I, I got very creeped out. And then later there's a scene where she's doing it again and she's describing the room this they're exact in, the office. Moment and is like, as it's happening. Yeah. And is like, there are brothers there's there. There's two brothers. I feel like they're watching me. Yeah. I oh, see. Even just saying this. Ooh, it creeps me it's out. It's so good because they're watching tapes from the fucking 80s it's so describing good. stuff in the. It's so good. It sucks so hard that there's this little nugget of something that's really creepy and cool in this movie <laughs> that does nothing with that. Yeah, because it's like, I want everyone to experience this chilling moment, but I don't want anyone to watch this movie. Oh, and that's the, that's the thing is, I think maybe we've learned the wrong lessons about what is scary about paranormal activity and what has become scary about this lore that they've created. Because I think fucking with time and doing stuff that like bends time and logic is so scary. I mean, just the fact that that sequence creeped us out so much where we have something that couldn't possibly be happening yet. It is or the, the end of the marked ones. Yes. The end of the marked ones awesome. is so, and it sucks that instead this movie has little bits to that, but it mostly just favors jump scares where we're seeing a lot of Toby. All the while, Leela is getting creepy. She's just becoming creepier and creepier. She's kind of, she's doing the thing where we see all the kids do in this series where she's talking to something in her room and, and nodding and saying, okay, and clearly making some kind of agreement with it. They find her outside at some point where she sneaks outside and apparently she was burying the mom's rosary in the backyard and there's a jump scare in the pool and it's all very silly. At one point, they find Leela in front of the mirror saying gibberish, it sounds like, but they realized way too quickly, I think, that she's saying Bloody Mary backwards. Uh, I think you were right in something. He, I think he re- rewound the footage, like shuttled backwards and heard it. Oh, say okay. Mary. I think so, I just missed that. Yeah there, yeah, there was an explanation for that. But what there's not a fucking explanation for is when Ryan asks, what's Bloody Mary? Get the fuck out yeah, of here. Come on, you don't everyone know what knows Bloody what Mary that is. is. Come on. That's such a line that I think they realize we got to write this in in case people don't know. Sure. But I thought everyone kind of. But I, I think it is funny that everyone truly has different versions of it. 
We yeah. were talking about that. I forget which episode. I think the third. Yeah, third movie we were saying. Because my version of it is the creepy lady Bloody Mary takes your place in the mirror and comes out and kills That's you. You turn one, yeah. into her. Yeah. But then this version is... You say it three times and then a witch appears and she shows you who you're supposed to marry. But when I used to play it, the way most kids play it, you say Bloody Mary three times and then Bloody Witch appears and grabs you by the neck. But everyone's got little twists to theirs. Tell us what your your weird local version was of that growing up. I'm very curious to hear. Skylar is familiar with spirit photography, though, as she She calls the ghost camera. I bet she likes aura photography a lot. Oh, for sure. Her with her fucking, what is that that she's wearing? It's like a robe. Looks oh like yeah, it's kind robe. of a kimono. I have something like that. It's yeah. my new agey outfit. <laughs> yeah, have you ever done an aura picture before? I've done it. No. I got one done for free in Pasadena because of course it was in Pasadena. You put your hand and you can buy these online for I think $10,000. Oh. I was looking it up. I was very curious because people like run more in businesses with these cameras. You Put your hand on this little metal thing. I think your fingertips go on the sensors and then it prints out a a pole. Like it takes a Polaroid of you and the Polaroid prints out and there's all these colors and stuff around it. Oh, and then you make a turkey out of it, right? What? Like the hand that you trace and make a turkey? Like, no, it's a picture of you. Oh. Not your hand. Oh. My aura is green and blue. Thank you. That's nice, son. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, yeah, so of course, Skylar knows all about ghost cameras apparently and they find out that their house is built on the same location as lois's house uh no the i think it's the house from three it would have been katie and christie's childhood house childhood house which burned Not down lois's house okay but where they chi- wound which, up at the th- end that, of that tracks movie. it's katie and christie's childhood house which we know burned down because we have that established in the first movie sure yeah so it's their childhood house and this the house that is in this movie is in the same spot and it was just rebuilt there yeah also house check we do that every time coolest house I, I like this house This a house lot. is pretty fucking cool. I think cool. if I had to pick one, this is the coolest one. Yeah, because their, their, their second story is just this huge wraparound balcony. Like, all around the second story, like you can it. look down into the, the first floor yeah. living room. It's pretty fucking cool. I like that. It feels very communal to me, where yeah. every kind of room on the upstairs opens up to this first floor. It's kind of nice. Yeah, it'd be like if a motel... Uh, you know, well, yeah, yeah, was, <laughs> but but the courtyard <laughs> with the pool was the living room. Yeah, exactly. And then you could be like, "Hey, everyone!" And they all come out of their doors and stand yeah. at the balcony, and you give a you give minutes. Yeah. I don't know. Oh my God, you're like the dad from Sound of Music. <laughs> that's what. <laughs> I have not seen that. Gonna so, <laughs> I'll just take your word on that. <laughs> Does he have family meetings? Oh my god, he's the mo- like he's the dad who has family meetings be with me. all of his children. With you make all our kids stand in a line and they learn the little songs. Yeah, and, yeah. Oh, you. Oh, we gotta watch that, James. You would love. Oh, cool. Mr. Von Trapp. Great. Yeah. I, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Oh, they also have a dope ass pantry. I peeped. They have a huge oh, yeah, walk in pantry. Walk in pantry. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, now that they know they live there, it's like, let's get a few more cameras, set them up, and do the night one yeah. bullshit. <sighs> We're doing yeah, the nights. I don't want to sit here and go through all the nights. We won't go so, through all yeah. the nights. It's not It's worth like it. the ghost thing goes through Skylar's body because she's there at night. Whoever the fuck she is is there also helping to take care of this child. Yeah. Has to be an aunt. I, yeah, like or an actual a very aunt. close friend. I guess. Uh, another night, Leela tries to burn the house down by taking her mom's Bible and tossing the uh, pages yeah, into a fireplace. Yeah, and she grabs this giant thing of matches yeah. that I love that they have where it's the actual big box. I forget what she says when she's trying to light the matches, but it's actually really creepy. Uh, take me away. Yeah. Take me away. And she tries to, she turns the gas on and tries to start a fire. Yeah, but Mama Emily stops her in time. Mm-hmm. Uh, they keep watching these tapes of Christy and Katie. And it, in the tapes, they're like forgetting about their mom. Yeah, apparently they are calling Grandma Lois' mom now, which makes me wonder who are they talking about in the first and second movies when they say you don't 
want to be like mom or they talk about mom. So I don't know who they're referring to now. Or if it's just bullshit because at this point they're just making shit up in the series yeah. in the sixth movie. I also love, and this got a genuine laugh for me, that they, when they're watching these tapes, because they keep talking about Toby and Uncle Mike says, Toby, it sounds like kind of a fun stripper name. Yeah. And he goes, please welcome to the stage, Toby. And that mental image is my favorite thing in the whole world. Just actual Toby. Yeah, it's just actual Toby in ghost form <laughs> doing a split against the wall <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> it's the fourth night or whatever when they uh, have that scene where young Christy describes their office. That's so good. It's so good. Because, yeah, it's like... She sees uh, food, lots of TVs, toys, brothers. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then that ends with, you know, it's they're like zooming in on her. And then Leela appears in the room. And it's like a jump scare because this movie has so it's fucking many of them. Scares. And then Leela sneezes and Christy on the tape says, bless you. Great. Love it. Great. That's such a fun thing that's subtle and cool and, and i think it's when he shows emily that that she finally is right. like oh something's weird thank you thank you it, it yeah it only took that and not the hours of footage they have of a literal ghost <laughs> <laughs> i can't believe a they're filming actual a ghost. ghost yeah watching their daughter as she sleeps yeah and they're just chilling they're just like I saw something in your oh, room. Oh, it was last weird, night. huh? Oh my god! It, I have I have written down here that the adults in this are not acting like adults. It feels very a bunch of it. It feels like teenagers running around doing an experiment or something. It it reminds me of the way that they're all acting in that fourth one, where it's a, it's a bunch of kids like, oh man, let's set up these cameras and it'll be crazy. This one feels like. They're not parents. It doesn't feel like that they have the their daughter's life at stake. They're just, oh, wow, this is crazy. Let's keep documenting it and see if anything else crazy happens. They're not, they're not concerned enough, I don't think. It's all very weird. It just feels like the daughter's part of their kind of experiment to see what's going on in their house. Yeah, they eventually bring in a priest. Yeah, eventually they get their shit together and get a priest, but I guess. It takes way too long. There's a cool shot, though, of... Uh, it's during a, the day, I think, and it's the camera's in Leela's room, and you just see her legs... I didn't even notice the it the first time because she's talking. We hear her somewhere and she's talking to Toby. And I thought she was just kind of off camera somewhere. But then you re you pointed out, dude, you can see her feet hanging from the ceiling. Yeah, they're just like kind of coming it's down. So it's weird. like she's walking down the air. It's kind so of. creepy. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And then she's standing by the window blowing out a recorder. <laughs> and the parents are like, fucking stop as all parents with a kid with a recorder say at one point and uh they like pull the recorder out of her mouth and the ghost cam catches a bunch of fucking ghost gloop coming out of her yes. mouth and nostrils Ooh, that actually was creepy it was gross yeah that it, it was gross for sure there's something so uncomfortable about that just invading the body of this little kid is that very icky and i i almost wish that that was the first one of one of the only glimpses we had of the mm like ghost form of toby the where we loop, actually yeah. see yeah i i kind of wish they kept it smaller that that was one of the first times we saw it because you don't see that much of the gloopy stuff but just realizing something is there and coming out of her nose and mouth would have been really creepy to see first instead of a full-blown toby just standing there yeah and they of <laughs> course that when he first gloops his way and he's standing next to her bed they do the fast forward thing on the tape where it's like oh he's standing there for yeah. hours it's like yeah he's a gloop he fucking that's not that's weird to me that's nothing to him yeah he's just floating there all the gloop reminds me of the fucking alien prequels there's a lot of mm. black goop and like invasion of oh no I got the gloop in my my nose and now I'm boned. Uh, around here is when they're talking about how the the council of witches is the midwives and they're doing the exposition Big dump. Big exposition dump. It's not done gracefully in this movie. Uh, we that conversation though I think it's the one that Leela has when she's floating up on the ceiling is the one where we realize she's getting instructions on how to draw a creepy door. Oh yeah, a bunch she's of gonna symbols do it. Her bed. Yeah, and we see she's drawn in crayon. I think on the wall this creepy doorway. Oh boy, I love the doorway shit. 
So I got excited for yeah. it. Like, oh, where are we going to go in this movie? That's the fun stuff. I know. That is the fun I stuff. I really hope this this new one they do gets more into that and how that whole web of doors works. I feel like they're just... Is, are we sure it's not a reboot? Oh, I don't know. I have no I just I feel have like no everything idea. now is just, just like reboot. Fuck or, it. Let's just... Reboot or direct sequel to the first one, but I don't think they would do that with this series. No, that'd be weird. Yeah. So I think that it's just going to be a fucking reboot. I don't know, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, it's Father Todd, by the way. He's Todd. here now. He's saying, oh, there's a demon stalking your daughter. And then <laughs> she, he's like trying to talk to her. And he, he like takes holy water and, and blesses her bear. Man, who, Bubba. Bubba, who I liked Father Todd's name, Griselda, a lot better. That's yeah. a great name That's for a bear. That's a good name for Griselda, a bear. Griselda yeah. Grizzy. That's yeah. awesome. Uh, yeah, but then he, he puts the holy water on her. I guess it doesn't do much because now she's smiling and he thinks he's won her over and her, her standing there with that fucking smile. And he's like, do you have a secret? And I just wish that she had said, I smell like beef. <laughs> yeah. Cause it zooms in on her face and James just goes, I smell like beef, <laughs> which is one of our favorite videos, Yeah, <laughs> but no, she just bites him. She just lunges <laughs> forward and fucking like just savagely attacks this priest it's great i love it that's kind of one of the best things about possessed kid movies is just whenever the kid just gets to go ham on a priest or whoever comes to visit them <laughs> yeah. it's always because it is always funny because the priest good. can't be mad yeah and he's not here he's like no it's fine it's fine i'll yeah. be back later i get it i get it. it's not her i know i know <laughs> i'm not blaming her it's like you can't be mad it's priest. so funny <laughs> love it i also love that the mom has <laughs> they're they're having nativity playtime. I guess it, we're just gonna get rid of all our toys. The recorder's going in the trash. Here, Leela, here's this nativity you get to play with, and that's the only thing we're playing with now. But I do love that they she picks up the uh the Mary figurine and says, Oh, she's going to have a very special baby. Kind of like uh Christy and you know. Yeah. It's, it's like okay, that's kind of fun. That's fun. Here's a dumb scene. Uh, they're like, okay, so we got this house for really cheap. Maybe we were led to be here. So the realtor, they try calling the realtor. Who's, whose name is Katie. Whose name is Katie. So it's probably fucking Katie. I just assume it, it is. Hey, Katie, maybe use a fucking a- alias. Alien, yeah. Just use a fake name if you're <laughs> setting up Toby a family. Toby on the phone. What's your name? Katie. Shit. <laughs> Katie, he does it every time. He always forgets to make up a new name. <laughs> so they say they try calling the realtor's office and find out that their Katie doesn't work there. Yeah, they've and, never heard of that person. Yeah, and so the dad says, "Hey, wife, how'd you meet her?" Cut. Movie cuts. He asks her again in a the scene right after, and I think it cuts. It just we just never. No, no, I need to know the answer to that. Yeah. Because that's important information. Because that's way more interesting. Yeah. Tell me how the mom met Katie, presumably. And it can be anything. It can be fucking anything. It can, you know, I online, shitty website. I posted a flyer. She responded. Just give us something. Or because- if you want to tie in the fourth movie, you could have Robbie be one of the kids. She says something like, oh, Layla has playtime or whatever the fuck kids go to with uh, her kid, Robbie. And she said, oh, I'm a realtor, blah, blah. Yeah. Something. Cool. And I know that we often say we you don't, don't need, need to, to explain things, explain things, right? Yeah. But when it's when it's something like this where uh, these characters were led into a trap, essentially, and then they have a very valid question of how did we find ourselves in this situation to begin with, we need something. You can't just ask that question and then cut away then without it. answering. It's so stupid. Yeah. Now we learn more about who they think Toby could be because we're talking about demons and we're reading some passages from, I think, Revelations Mm. because of, I I forget how they even get there, but they're talking about the seven princes of hell. I'm assuming Toby's one of them and how they... Oh, Toby's a prince? Yeah. Oh, cool. Prince Toby. Oh, we're saying, okay, we're on different wavelengths there. Oh, what were you going for? Uh... One, two, princess who would do you. Just go ahead now. Oh, two princes or yeah. whatever? Yeah, I was going with Prince Ali. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Prince Toby, scary is he. 
He's a demon. <laughs> 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 he's riding an elephant. No, he's riding the the ladybug thing from the pool. The pool cleaner. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's, he's riding the pool cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> and then Katie can be the genie. Sure. Yeah. About him. <laughs> that tracks. I like it. <laughs> Better movie. Robbie Zabu. Oh my god! Absolutely. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, I just wrote here that I think in the pantheon of demons, I don't know how many demons there are. I feel like there's a bunch. There's so many of them. There's just an abundance. Toby's got to be one of the weird ones that they don't like, you know? Oh, yeah. Because what does he really do? He doesn't even know. He keeps switching it up. It really, it doesn't seem like he has an, like, a, a... End game. Although I guess he does because we see that at the end of this. But then what's his plan after that? Well, I think it's one of those things where it's like, okay, Toby's like wants to have a human form and all the other demons are like, sure, dude, if that's your, if that's your, what you want to do, that's fine. But you gotta, you know, you gotta set a plan to get there. And then Toby starts a plan with like the firstborn shit and he does he just doesn't follow through. He's yeah. switching it up in this. And they're like, no, Toby, you got to stick with it until it works, man. Yeah. But now he's talking about little girls in time dimensions and shit. Yeah. And he's just kind of just doing pranks in this. Because he oh, yeah. starts up a singing snowman toy just to fuck with that. It's very weird. He alternates between being genuinely terrifying you know, kind of like sw- like swooping by people or flying through people and being and, and standing over a child for eight hours and watching them sleep, or he's turning on toys to jump scare people with a funny snowman that sings. Yeah. He's weird. I don't know what his deal is. Well, he's always been a little fucking mischievous. Yeah, I guy. guess so. He's always been opening drawers and shit. And this one, he opened some kitchen drawers. Mm-mm. Can't have a. That's got to be on the bingo. Oh yeah, the the kitchen kitchen cabinets yeah. and drawers open. Yeah, mm-hmm. that happens. There's there's one night where basically Toby's just chasing everyone around this house. Yeah, and the brothers are just are specifically being targeted. I think, and it. <laughs> Turns it is they're playing hide and seek with Toby. Yeah, they're they're like hiding behind the kitchen island and they peek with the camera and they see Toby like, Oh, gonna get you. Yeah. And then they, they hide and they peek around the other side, nothing there. Peek over, oh I'm gonna get you. Yeah, Toby's standing there playing peekaboo with them. It's so weird. What's his deal? Ryan definitely yells up to his wife also. He yells up to Emily, stay in the room and lock the door. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That'll lock stop the door. Him. From Prince Toby. Yeah. <laughs> Around here is when they find out that Hunter and they find out who Hunter is and that they have the same birthday. Yeah, because Hunter shows up in the tapes from 1992 oh, that's at this right. point, which again wouldn't make sense because Toby he was born in 2005. Or Toby, yeah, because Hunter was born in 2005. Then it's some other, we're just kind of going through nights here. Layla opens up a doorway in her wall. It's oh, yeah. all between all the symbols. And then there's all these cracks that start uh, showing up and light coming through the cracks. And there's this doorway that I thought kind of looked cool. It looked that, cool. That it looks like a poltergeist. Setup. It did thing. remind me of poltergeist. It felt very 80s. And I mean, pr- it also probably helped that it's being filmed on the uh, ghost camera, which is an 80s looking. Well, I think it's practical. I think the effect begins... And then I think oh, you think the, the tunnel itself? I think the is... tunnel itself is because pra- she gets in there and climbs through, and at the end they go through it as well. Mm-hmm. So I think the the practical tunnel looks cool. It does look cool. And yeah, she like runs off to be in there. Mm-hmm. And uh, God, we shouldn't have gotten that loud ass toy for Lucy. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think you'll be able to hear it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, if you hear a bell, that's what it is. But yeah, she like goes and hangs out. We don't see what she's doing. When mm-hmm. she, but we do hear Hunter from the other end saying, "Come play with me." Yeah, which is great. And she disappears out in there at like two thirty in the morning, and her uh, her parents see that she's missing, run all through the house looking for her, and then when they find her, she's back in her bed, mm-hmm. uh, having gone and vacation through time, mm-hmm. which is really cool. And now they, I, I forget what specifically prompts it, but this is when they finally decide we're leaving. We're going to go to a hotel, even though the priest already told them, no, it's haunting your daughter. It doesn't matter where you go. It's that standard so... ghost demon yeah, differentiation that mix up. Yeah, yeah, that we've learned since the first movie. Mm-hmm. So while everyone's at the hotel, Mike and Skylar come back to get um, luggage and stuff that, 
they all kind of left behind because I think everyone kind of got out of there in a rush. Mm -hmm. They find creepy drawings that Layla did of a goat head with a bunch of eyes. You know, it just kind of, we're just adding stuff to the- Oh, yeah, the goat, yeah. Yeah, even though that hasn't been a thing. That hasn't been a thing. And now we're introducing a goat. So while they're in the house, they find Layla in her room, even though Layla was supposed to be at the hotel, which is apparently six miles away. Mm -hmm. And Layla's sitting in her bed and is scratching at the wall where that door was. So this was actually really creepy. This was good. Yeah, her fingers are all bloody. Yeah, she's basically- scratching her hands to ribbons on this wall trying to get back through the doorway and then the the parents come back and they say we went to sleep for like a second and then she just somehow ended up back it's it's it shouldn't make sense even if she'd walked it it like wouldn't have made time wise she just somehow ended up back at their house yeah that one that's another thing i maybe could have used a little bit more explanation of or like I think it's creepier if the parents just, you know, they all go to sleep for the night and they think it's all good and they find that she actually has walked back to the house. She did walk all six miles. Yeah, that Maybe would Maybe her work feet too. are all dirty and bloody or something. Yeah. I think that's creepier than if she teleported or Toby carried her. <laughs> I think it's creepier if this kid is so determined to get back there that her you know she clearly has been walking outside yeah for that long i think that's scarier but yeah and i guess at this point they're like okay it's not gonna work to hide or like run away so let's just exercise the demon exercise the demon except for uh, he says exorcism isn't gonna work we have to fucking we have to do an extermination and my thought is you have to kill, kill their kid, kid? yeah kill that kid? but no it's more although this still seems like kind of an exorcism to me it's, it's different yeah. in it, it's it, a distinction without a difference father todd it's instead of what sprinkling holy water he just makes holy water in a bathtub something like that that's the thing if you're a priest you have yeah you can magic make any power. you can make holy. anything holy water yeah dude can you ma- can so here's my question okay you're a priest <gasps> can you make the ocean holy water? right because yeah what's the uh what's the um, the um rate you know where does your if it's if i'm thinking because i've been playing like fire demon. emblem i'm thinking oh, okay. if it's like a strategy game how many grids outwards does your power extend as a priest yeah, your if range you of cast attack. your yeah if you cast your bless holy water or bless water how far out does that go or yeah. is it the ocean like, what's the range of no, power dude, that you get the ocean. from God? You can't bless that ocean, man. Why not? That's too much. Well, then what's the limit? Then you have a bunch of little fish acolytes swimming around. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if the limit is it's only you have to be able to see all of the water you're blessing. <laughs> but you can see a lot of ocean. But you can't see all of it. Do you know what I mean? But like, what determines the end of what you can see, man? I don't know. You know, you can't see where, because you, you you can't see all the ocean. It's too big. But I can see all of a swimming pool, so I can make a whole swimming pool of holy water, probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you think that would be but too big? But then, what if you're in like a plane? No, because I think you've got to be. You got like, to touch it? it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I'm thinking like lakes. I think if I'm thinking, okay, so a lake like. In one of those nice kind of lakes, you know, lakefront neighborhoods where you could still see the whole lake because there's houses around it yeah. and stuff. Could you bless that and yeah, make it holy water? Yeah, that's a water? good example. Yeah, or like someone lake, lake please Saint answer Claire. this for me. I'm genuinely really curious. What is the limit here of how much holy water can you make? Mm-hmm. And also, if you make something holy water, can a priest tell if something's been blessed already or not? Oh, so you don't like accidentally have people like doubling it up? Yeah, redundant. You're blessing. just wasting God's time. Mm-hmm. That's not a good way to get into heaven. <laughs> yeah. This movie sucks. <laughs> this movie sucks. <laughs> so, so it's time to fucking exercise the house. The kids got yeah. They black put a eyes. sheet in the bathtub and soak it with bathtub holy water. Oh yeah. Yeah, they make a circle. They make a. It's like a circle with a star in it. Um, Doing the thing. Yeah, and they. I'll stand in it. And Leela's definitely like, he knows what you're doing. Yeah, I think this is because, again, Toby is a little troublemaker. They do this whole thing, and basically Toby just makes them think that it worked because... Well, when they throw the sheet on him? Well, it's it's because it 
it all kind of stops for a second and they all think Leela's normal and they're all hugging her and then she goes, he knows what you're doing and then that's when every, all the shit yeah. hits the Yeah, and fan. yeah, they throw that holy water sheet oh, on Toby no. and it's just this fucking oh, ghost no. form. I mean, that's it's a sheet when, ghost. The, when the sheet's on top of Toby, that's cool because you can see there's a like but isn't it right before that when the circle turns to fucking green it looks like fucking harry potter shit it's like <laughs> green flame erupting from this and there's a face that pops out like that oh, and it looks like in, in it looks like so in the first dumb. harry potter where he goes to the forbidden section of the library it opens up oh, that yeah. book and that face that's what it fucking looks like you guys that's what toby looks like in this it is so bad yeah because he's thrashing around in there that's when they throw the sheet on him and the sheet's an immediate improvement on the visual of the sequence <laughs> but then he pops out of there and he or no the sheet the sheet collapses and they think it's over but then they look at Skyler R.A.P. well the way Todd Father Todd gets yoinked back and dies yeah fa- yeah because they're like we got how are we gonna finish this without him and yeah they, they do Father Todd gets I don't know he literally just pulled back yeah. into the darkness and that's and then it. they realize that uh, Skylar also got Tobied. Yeah, Skylar got Tobied. She looks all gross and, and she's then she dead. Throws up acid blood on Uncle yeah. Mike and melts him and oh, he's yeah. dead now. Cool. Man, that sucks if you're doing a, a demon um extermination and you don't even get to die via demon. Like, I'd at least want to go have And it's for your fucking niece. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> that's just you know, it's like, oh man, I got broken up with and then this yeah, my niece who's only like 25% genetically similar to me. <laughs> if you I'm, get care if about I'm someone who's not related to you, Jesus. Yeah, but care enough to get your face melted off by acid oh blood. Oh my goodness. No, I'm just saying it sucks if, you know, I would, I would want, if I'm going to die in a demon extermination, I want the demon to enter my face or however he gets in there and Make and make me throw up acid blood because that's cool. I don't want to be the person who gets thrown up on and that's how I die. Yeah, fuck that, sucks. that shit. If I gotta go in a, in a demon thing, I want to at least be the one. You want to be the conduit there? Yeah, that's at least pretty cool. Yeah. But then, so Toby's chasing everyone, everyone around, around and he's holy shit. Popping. Ryan <sighs> gets a fucking. To complete all these mummy effects it looks it is the mummy ride dude it this is like this reminds me of the part where you take off really fast in the beginning i feel like this is something that would kind of pop out at you during that part is this, this fucking hand digital ass hand comes through his back out of his chest out his grabs at the camera whoa, wow yeah. whoa yeah yeah it's dumb good god it looks like shit and it, and the effect like doesn't look Awful. In a normal movie, it would look fine. But in this, it's so jarring yeah. because when it's, it's a, a found handheld footage. camera, found footage, and it's supposed to be real life that we experience. And then here comes a cartoon hand out of this guy's chest. It's not. It's dumb. Convincing. It's bad. They. What do they do? Oh yeah, I just have. Oh no, underlined because everything in this looks so bad now. Uh, it's it's down to just Emily, and she goes through the tunnel that is appeared yeah, over the bed again. Yeah, she chases Leela through the tunnel because I think Leela. I think Leela. Leela's ran gone. Through there, she yeah. fucking ran. She was waiting to get through there, and she ends up in a basement. And it's Christy and Katie's in the eighties. Yeah. She's oh a- yeah, she and yeah, she ends up in. The house that used to be there. She's in Katie and Christie's old home. Everything's covered in drop cloths again. It's creepy. I don't mm. know why they the coven likes to decorate with drop cloths. They're just very anti-dust. It is a bunch of, of older <laughs> yeah. ladies. And <laughs> yeah, they've all got couch There's protectors. drop cloths and, and doilies stuff. everywhere. Right, exactly. Yeah. But definitely... <laughs> Some of them are more in favor of the plastic couch coverings, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but no, Grandma Lois is more drop cloths to protect all of the furniture. So she sees Katie, I think, who says it's too late. We it's already, too late. It's, it's been done, whatever. She says, basically, you're fucked. Like, everything's been done already. Yeah. And she finds Leela, and Leela says, oh, it wasn't even that bad. They just needed a little bit of my blood. I guess they probably cut her hand and took some of her blood. Also, oh, right before that, she, like, sees the uh, a le- uh, dripping from the ceiling and gets freaked out. And oh, I'm yeah. Like, why Did are you we being- ever resolve that? I don't know. I'm assuming it's blood or something. But I'm like, why are you getting freaked out over a fucking a leak in a musty well, old basement does she has she found leela yet though no she's point? still looking for well Leela. she probably maybe thinks that that's like leela's dead body or okay something. but then she finds leela sure. and this is when 
we realize that the ritual has been complete and Toby is a man baby. <laughs> he's got his man legs. Oh boy, he's got beefy calves and yeah, they're that's shaved. That's all we see. And he uh he kills Emily. Yeah, we just see his legs and he he picks up he kind of strokes her face and then picks her up and fucking just snaps her neck. Mm-hmm. Just kind of cuz Toby's really scary. And then he just walks off He's of Lila. Right. Yeah, he kind of extends his hand to Lila. They, they what leave. they should have done with this uh, this end scene is make it so that whatever Emily did in trying to get Leela back caused the fire that burned down the house. Ooh, I that like would have been that. fun. You know, if you're fucking with time, if, do if the you're crazy doing thing, might as well. Where it's like you cause the events that you try to avoid or whatever. Interesting. I can't, yeah, I like that. That'd be instead. It's just the same. I don't know. This ending seems very and familiar I, in this series. And this is when I'm like, what is Toby's end game? What he's does he done want? Now. Yeah, he's now a, he's person? a person now. What he's gonna just be? Because now, now the problem that you've you've created, and again, this all, is gonna happen with time travel. Time travel is really hard to write. What is Toby? Human Toby? Because this is the '80s, right? Oh, what has Human Toby been doing this whole time? Well, if I learned anything from Lucifer, he's probably running a nightclub. That's what Lucifer does oh, in that show. <laughs> yeah, as a human. Is it? Oh, okay. What? It's not. T- it's not like for time travel reasons. It's just. No, it's he's just, got like a human form, and, and he's he okay. Is he runs a nightclub. But yeah, if, what? So this movie goes from the '80s up to the present, and it's back in the '80s that we get a human Toby. I didn't think about that. And Leela, what are they doing the whole series then? Because that fucks up your whole yeah, timeline. Why would he then have to do all that shit later on? If it's well, yeah, it's why would he have to possess Katie in two thousand? Well, to or make whatever? well, I think it's just he he's always possessed. It's it's a thing yeah, where you yeah. you know it's everything was always gonna happen. Yeah. But then I just wonder what is he up to then if he's a human, unless he's so powerful that. He then can change. You didn't see all the all the President Toby signs in the background throughout the series. That's what <laughs> he's been up to. He's been running the country. <laughs> Dude, President Toby would be an improvement. <laughs> yeah. All right. I just I just want to know I want to know people's theories are and what the fuck are they up to? Yeah, go ahead and tell us why whatever the don't fuck we you want see Toby this. the rest of the. I wonder if it's just he he knows that he can't interfere as a human with or is it kent i don't know that'd be stupid i don't think it's kent but is it kent. just he he knows he can't interfere with the goings-on of the movies or else it fucks up him becoming a person so he gets away as far as possible i yeah. don't know i don't know man whatever i don't think we're ever gonna get the answers no. to that not unless they bring back christopher landon and have him help them write their way out of this. Let's do a Kickstarter for Christopher Landon. Let's get that going. <laughs> Please, Christopher, come back. Yeah, I'm going to have to look up what the future of this series holds. I'm if very, it's a reboot very or what. But uh, yeah, let us know what you thought of this movie. If you have anything you can fill us in on. If you thought we were too hard on it. We weren't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's that. That's Paranormal Pool Party. We're done with it. We're done. Next week, I I think I have a fun idea. I'm not going to say what it is quite yet, just in case I change my mind, but okay. I have a fun episode idea. We're going to be back to, to regular programming Thank now. Thank God. Yeah, I want to do more researchy type stuff. I've I think s- that the next big research episode I want to do is... You know, speaking of all the creepy kids in these movies, I kind of want to talk about kids in mm. horror and why we're afraid of kids, why it, horror movies use kids so often, and why it's really effective, and why kids in general creep adults out so much. Because I think that that's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That's good stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. I'm excited to get back to regularity with these. Me too. Because paranormal, it's been fun, but ready to talk about something else yeah me too <laughs> <laughs> all right let's do social let's do the social meets dead meat james twitter and instagram uh i got that dead meat store popping oh that's yours sorry that's fine dead meat store it's popping we've I got think. a bunch of new shirts and mm-hmm. stuff uh i'm at careback c-r-e-b-e-c-c on twitter and instagram dead and meat. if you want merch, I mean, it's weird it's muscle memory if yeah. you want merch dead meat store.com dead meat pod at gmail if you yeah i'm I've been getting so many emails. It, it's great because the show is, 
you know, we're reaching more people, but it's just, I used to be able to reply to everything and I can't, I every, once, that feeling. every once in a while I, tr- I try to, you know, reply to some, but it's just a lot. I think the first couple months of the channel, I tried replying to every comment on every video, oh, like man. typing that out a response. Being sustainable. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. But again, thank you guys for doing the pool party with us. It really saved my ass this summer. Yeah. yeah. And we'll get back to it. So you will see you next week. Until then, I'm James. I'm Chelsea. And this has been the Dead Meat Podcast. <laughs>